Think of a ship's name and chances are you'd want to impulsively put the prefix SS at the start. After all, it's just what ships are called. But why? Well, the truth is not all ships are created equal, and that little SS title doesn't apply to many ships today at all. Prefixes have been used before ships' names to denote their role, their nationality, and whether or not they're carrying mail. Random, I know. SS, TSS, HMS, ARA, USS, RMMV, XQJKLIV, okay, I made that last one up. They've all adorned ships' names, and they all mean vastly different things. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs, and today we'll take a look at ships' prefixes and answer the question, why are some ships called SS? So where does SS come from? Well, it probably wouldn't surprise you to know that the second S in the abbreviation stands for ship. Creative, I know. And that first one has a lot to do with the way ships back in the 18 and 1900s were powered. Steam was the absolute game changer that interrupted the way the world had worked forever. See, before Steam, things were way more difficult. Things couldn't be easily mass produced. Goods cost a lot, but with steam engines, the industrial revolution could take hold. Suddenly, countless variations of tools and machines could run off of steam power, and so could ships. The steamship became the standard way to cross the world's oceans, but not overnight. It took time to take off, because when first introduced, people were less than impressed. See, for centuries ships had been wind-powered, and sail had become a craft that humans had mastered the hard way. Sailing ships were fast and trusted. Generations of sailors had learnt their craft and were deeply respected. So you can only imagine that when these weird, chugging machines came along belching smoke and looking ungainly, most people laughed them off as a curiosity. Soon, steamships began to take hold as their benefit became well known and they proved themselves as a serious way to cross the ocean. But operators knew that they had to make their ships stand out from the pack. Passengers making bookings on ships across the Atlantic might be dismayed, for example, to trek out to their trusted sailing ship, only to discover at the last minute, and to their horror, that it was actually a steamship instead. Steamship operators began to look to the Royal Navy in the way that they had set their ships apart for decades by the use of a prefix. The ships of the Royal Navy had been denoted by the prefix HMS, which stood for His or Her Majesty's ship since the 1770s or 1780s. Early on, it hadn't been considered necessary, but in lengthy reports, when repeatedly writing His Majesty's ship such and such, which had been tradition since at least the 1600s, over and over again, it became a chore. Swapping in the simple abbreviation HMS became the done thing, and soon it became standardised and all warships of the Royal Navy became known as HMS something or other. Steamship operators did the same thing. This new class of ship got its own prefix, SS, steamship, to mark it out from its sail-driven contenders. But this wasn't enough, because it turns out that marking your ship out through the use of prefixes could actually give away a lot of very useful information as to the characteristics of your ship. And with the passage of time, prefixes have only got more and more convoluted and complicated. Let's take a look at some. The easiest to explain is probably the prefix USS. If you're from the United States, you'll be familiar with this one. It stands simply for United States Ship, and is used for ships of the US Navy. USS, as a prefix, is only surprisingly modern. There'd been no official regulation for prefixes in the US Navy until as late as 1907, when Theodore Roosevelt standardised it and made it official. Many of the world's navies actually followed suit. The United Kingdom already had HMS, sure, but then there are so many others, like ARA for the Argentine Navy, it stands for Armada de la Republica Argentina, or in the First World War, the German and Austrian SMS, Seine Majestat Schiff, or His Majesty's Ship, basically the German version of HMS. Some are very unoriginal, like the Australian Navy with HMAS, His Majesty's Australian Ship, or New Zealand with HMNZS, no points for guessing what that stands for. Now obviously this is very useful at determining at a glance what nationality that warship belongs to, but it has presented some issues. German and Japanese warships in the Second World War did not use prefixes, and in fact the German Navy still does not use one for its warships. 
Now obviously this can be a bit confusing, so historians and enthusiasts have given German and Japanese warships from the Second World War their own creative prefixes after the fact. For Germany it's KMS or DKM, KM meaning Kriegsmarine or the German Navy of the Second World War, so KMS, Kriegsmarine ship, or DKM, Deutsches Kriegsmarine or German Navy. For Japan it's IJN, the Imperial Japanese Navy. To mark out that some ships were hospital ships of a certain nationality then the letter H could be slipped in, so for example in HMHS for His Majesty's or Her Majesty's hospital ship for Great Britain, and for a time the US had USAHS for United States Army hospital ship, that might have been too convoluted because that prefix is out of use today. Instead US Navy ships that accrued with civilians and not properly commissioned are prefixed with USNS for United States naval ship. Confusing, I know. The US Coast Guard gets its own fancy prefix with US CGC or United States Coast Guard Cutter, with Cutter being a type of ship. So that's simple enough, prefixes used in relation to warships give you their nationality up front. But for merchant ships things have gotten even more complicated, because remember I said that earlier steamships used SS to make themselves stand out from their sailing ship brethren? Well you can only imagine how confusing things got when new methods of propulsion were added, and since it wasn't regulated or enforced, all sorts of different prefixes began to pop up. One such famous example is that of Titanic, where on different posters and material Titanic is variously referred to as SS Titanic, RMS Titanic, or TSS Titanic. Let me explain. Titanic was naturally a steamship, so when delivered as new from her owners she was referred to as Steamship Titanic or SS Titanic. But then something interesting happened. The ship, after proving herself at her sea trials, was awarded a contract to carry Royal Mail on board. Now this was a lucrative contract and it was usually awarded to the fastest and most prestigious British steamers. Now this was a big deal for a shipping company back then because to carry Royal Mail was a sign of trust reliability and, above all, speed. Now winning such a contract came with some benefits including the right to fly the Royal Mail pennant, but it also came with its own prefix, RMS or Royal Mail Ship. So Titanic transformed from SS to RMS. But weirdly, in other documentation you can find Titanic referred to as TSS. So what's that about? Well this is where ship's prefixes got tangled and sometimes confusing because shipbuilders and operators began to use the prefix as a way to show the kind of machinery that the ship had down below. Back in the days of sail, the various classes of sailing ship were obsessively sorted and memorised by captains and seamen. Frigates, sloops, barks, clippers, chebecs, brigs, sloops, the list goes on and on. So it stands to reason that by the time steamships came around the tradition would continue. Now prefixes began to denote the kinds of machinery and the number of propellers the ship carried. Lusitania was a ship with four propellers and turbine steam engines. Her prefix on many postcards and documentation from her construction refers to her as QSTS Lusitania, quadruple screw turbine ship. Now Titanic was often referred to as TSS Titanic, but the truth is there's some argument over what TSS actually stands for, with contenders being triple screw steamship or more simply turbine steamship since she also carried a turbine alongside her conventional expansion steam engines. Now either way the point of the story is that soon prefixes began to get out of hand and became more and more strange. As the steam engine fell out of use and the diesel engine rose in popularity the prefix MV became the norm. MV, which stands for motor vessel because a motor is different to a steam engine. Early on motor ships were actually denoted as MS, motor ship, but in the end ship was swapped out for vessel and MV became standard. Dominion Monarch was a big old motor ship from the Shaw Savile line, she got their QSMV prefix for quadruple screw motor vessel. That was a weird one. Then there were other modes of propulsion like turbo electric ships that got their own prefixes too like QTEV, quadruple screw turbine electric vessel. In a funny twist of fate it became necessary to mark sailing ships out as unique since now there had become so few of them by the late 20th century. SV or sailing vessel and SY for sailing yachts. Now there's a whole host of ship prefixes that can give you a ton of information, but things have become more streamlined, more standardised. Modern ship prefixes aren't focused on the number of propellers that ship carries. If things were as complicated as they used to be back then, then the liner Queen Mary 2 
would be referred to correctly today as probably something like QSRMG TMV Queen Mary 2 or quadruple screw male gas turbine motor vessel, but she isn't. Now hopefully the last few minutes haven't felt like I've just been barking acronyms at you, but it just goes to show that the prefix has become a very useful and simple way of determining any kinds of information about a ship that you might need at a glance. If you're a tugboat captain hanging around the stern of the QSMV Dominion Monarch back in the 1950s, then I'm sure you'd be glad to know just from the prefix that there were four big propellers down there for you to try and steer clear of, and not just two. For decades, the prefix used for ships was not standardised, and some pretty weird ones seemed to pop up every now and then, but with time, this too has become the norm and now an impressive array of prefixes are still in use. There are very few SS's around because the steamship has fallen out of use, and even the old RMS ships are mostly gone, because now mail is just carried by airplanes. Still it's nice that when the last great ocean liner, Queen Mary II, was built back in the early 2000s, she was given a prefix by the Royal Mail that was a nod to her history and pedigree. RMS Queen Mary II, possibly the last ship to ever be given the honour, and the end of a long and prestigious line. And I'm sure that we can all agree that RMS sounds a lot better than QSRM GTMV. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy. And I'll see you again next time.